In this video, we are going to discuss a practical telephony system that was invented and implemented in USA by a famous research lab called Bell Labs. This system is called T1 Carrier System. The story behind T1 Carrier System started in the old days when the, in the beginning, the number of users using the telephony system in USA was only a few users. And suddenly, at a certain point, the demand increased. The number of users who wanted to subscribe to the telephony system increased. However, the capacity of the uh, underground cables that were extended for the telephony system were, was not enough to support all the users. And hence, the government had two choices, either to uh, uh, extend new cables in the current underground space however the underground space at that time was all used uh, for other services like water gas sewer the other option was to dig the streets and extend new cables and this idea was also not attractive for the government especially in busy cities like new york where uh, the, uh, it will cause a lot of traffic jams a lot, a lot of traffic problems and the many dislocations so they started to think whether we can use the same cables to increase the capacity. We can transmit more users on the same cables that are there. So the first idea that came to their mind is to use FDM, Frequency Division Multiplexing, which means that over the same cable, they multiplex many voice channels, many calls. They can be transmitted over the same cable. This is what we called before Frequency Division multiplexing which means that over the same cable they can multiplex a voice channel here between 0 and 4 kilohertz another voice channel between 4 and 8 for example and another voice channel between 8 and 12 this is called frequency division multiplexing but unfortunately the cables at that time they had only a bandwidth of approximately 4 kilohertz the bandwidth of the cables mean had only a, a value of 4 kHz, which means that after 4 kHz, the signals after 4 kHz will start to be distorted. And then all the voice signals that you are going to multiplex after 4 kHz, they will not reach to the other side correctly. So the idea of frequency division multiplexing didn't fly. Surprisingly, they found the solution in pulse coded modulation in PCM by multiplexing several users, several voice calls using time division multiplexing over the same cable. And we'll explain how this is done in a few minutes. And it was a surprise because PCM usually needs much larger bandwidth than the bandwidth of the cable, which is around 4 kHz. And although it needs much larger bandwidth than the bandwidth of the cable, the idea was successful because of something used in the digital communications. It's called the regenerative repeater. The regenerative repeater simply, the regenerative repeater means that it's a device, it's a circuit that receives the signal. So assume that you are transmitting a signal here over a cable. Then the repeater receives the signal from this side and then it cleans the signal, it decodes it. This is the repeater. It decodes the signal and gives you a new clean signal without any distortion, without any noise. So assume that you transmit here uh, binary bits like 1 and 0, then due to distortion, due to the bandwidth of the cable is much smaller than the bandwidth of the PCM, this signal will reach to the repeater with a lot of distortion. So for example, it will reach something like this, okay? Then the repeater is going to decode this signal and then generate a new clean signal without any distortion and transmit it again. And then in the middle again, we can put another repeater to receive that distorted signal and generate a new, a new clean signal without any distortion. And usually they use the repeater, they use the repeater in the middle between the, uh, the transmitter and the final receiver. They use it at distances calculated carefully so that the distortion is still manageable. 
the distortion didn't increase above a certain level because if you leave if you don't use a repeater then the distortion is going to increase as you go and then you will not be able to decode the bits the binary one the binary zero at the final receiver so before the distortion increases above a certain level they put a repeater that removes the distortion and gives you a new clean signal and again it allows here some distortion and before the distortion increases to a certain level they install a new repeater that receives the signal and they transmit it again as clean without any distortion so the idea of the repeater it was so helpful in using the PCM to multiplex several calls over the same cable using this idea of the repeater they started to install repeaters every approximately 6,000 feet or approximately 2 kilometers these repeaters they started to receive the distorted signal and then decode the signal remove the distortion and generate a new signal to transmit it over the rest of the cable and then again they use another repeater to remove the distortion and transmit the signal without any distortion over the rest of the cable so the idea of the repeater can be used in digital communications, but it cannot, use, it cannot be used in analog communications because in analog communication, you will not be able to remove the distortion. In the digital, you can remove the distortion because you know that this must be either 5 volt or negative 5 volt. So if you find something like this, if you receive something like this, then you would say that probably this is binary one, this is 5 volt. If you receive something like this with a distortion, you would say this is probably with high probability it's negative 5 volt which means it's binary zero so you can remove the distortion and generate here positive 5 volt clean and negative 5 volt clean but in analog communications if you transmit an analog signal and then you get some noise over this analog signal for example this part change it like this and you receive this red signal you will not be able to tell which value is the noise and which value was the original signal so the idea of the repeater cannot be used with analog but it can be used with digital that's why the PCM that's why using the PCM along with time division multiplexing between several users was successful in order to increase the capacity of the telephony system in USA so in conclusion, in conclusion, they found the solution to increase the capacity of the system in PCM in addition to time division multiplexing between many users, between many voice calls without having to extend new cables, without having to dig the ground or do any additional work. It's just a repeater or a group of repeaters that is going to be installed around the city in several locations and the distance was between each repeater and the next repeater approximately two kilometers i'm going to show you now a block diagram of the t1 carrier system the t1 carrier system was used to multiplex time division multiplexing between 24 simultaneous calls at the same time so over the same cable you can transmit 24 simultaneous voice calls we are going to call these calls voice channels channel number one channel number two up to channel number 24 so each channel that we are going to talk about here it's a call you can consider it to be a call and you can consider number one number two number three you can consider these are telephone lines connected to 24 different houses so you can consider that line number one here is connected to house number one line number two is connected to house number two and so on so you have 24 houses in the same neighborhood and these 24 houses are connected to by cables to this to this switch that we are going to explain now so you have 24 houses these 24 houses are connected to a rotating switch this rotating switch is probably at the central office of the neighborhood and this rotating switch what it does exactly is it takes a sample from each voice call and then rotates so it takes a sample from house number one I mean by house number one the voice call generated from my house number one 
So it takes a sample from the signal coming from house number one, then a sample from the signal coming from house number two, then from house number three, four, up to 24. So it takes a sample from each house in order. And then it goes again to house number one, it takes another sample, house number two, house number three. So it's going to do this repeat, repeatedly and periodically. So it will take one sample from house number one, or what we are going to call now channel number one, voice channel number one, a sample from channel number two, sample from channel number three, and so on, until it reaches to channel number 24, then it will repeat the process. New sample from channel number one, this is the second uh, uh, sample from channel number one, second sample from channel number two, second sample, sample from channel number three, and so on. So it keeps taking samples from different channels, and then uh, until it reaches channel 24 and then it repeats. Then these samples, they go to a coder. This block is called the coder, and although it is called the coder, it includes inside the quantization, it includes the uh, compounding, and it includes the encoding. So this block it is going to convert the samples into, maybe it will compress them first and then quantize, and then it will convert them into bits. Each sample will be converted to 8 bits. So this is the system T1 carrier. Each sample is going to be converted to 8 bits. These bits, the stream of bits at the output of the coder, is going to pass through something called digital processor. This digital processor is going to do additional processing on the bits. For example, it's going to add some framing bits, some signaling bits for uh, dial tones, for uh, uh, on-hook, off-hook, as we are going to explain later. So it's going to add some bits. Also, uh, one of the purposes of the digital processor is to add error-correcting codes, similar to the parity chip codes. For example, if you have, if you have some bits like some bits like uh, uh, one one zero one, you can add the par parity chip code. Uh, which represents that whether the number of ones here are odd or even. For, for example, it is odd here, then you add zero. If the number of ones is even, you add one. And the, this parity, this parity check bit, it helps the receiver to determine whether it received the bits correctly or uh, incorrectly. So this is kind of error, what we call error coding. And this error coding is done through the digital processing. So in conclusion, this digital processor is doing some extra processing on the stream of voice bits, the bits coming from the voice signals. It does some extra processing. It adds some uh, signaling bits, some framing bits, some error correcting codes. And then it transmits the bits over the transmission medium, which was at that time the telephony cable underground cables until it reaches to the central office and the central office will forward the bits to uh, another central office maybe to distribute the voice calls among the different uh, houses that these houses are talking to so for example if house number one here is talking to house number 12 here then the samples of house number one is going to be forwarded to house number 12. so at the other side, you are going to use a digital processor that will, do, that, that will do the opposite to what the digital processor here has done. So it's going to remove the framing bits, the error correction codes, and the signaling bits. They are going to use them, actually, in order to detect whether there are uh, any errors or not. Then decoder, this decoder is going to take the bits, convert them back into samples. And then, again, a rotating switch. A rotating switch. This rotating switch is going to distribute the samples among the houses that these houses are talking to. As I said, for example, if house number one here is talking to house number 19 here, then the samples of house number one, the sample of channel number one, is going to be uh, it's going to be forwarded to house number 19 here. The next sample of channel number one again it's going to be forwarded to house number 19. Channel number two is going to be forwarded to whatever house channel number two is talking to, and so on. So this rotating switch is going to distribute the samples, the received samples, among the different houses that these houses are talking to. Once these samples are distributed for the different houses here, 
each house is going to receive uh, uh, some samples. For example, if house number two here is talking to house number 24, there it's going to receive channel 24, sample number one of channel 24, sample number two of channel 24, sample number three of channel 24. So this is channel 24, okay? Sample number one, sample number two, sample number three, all of them from channel number 24. This is assuming that house number two there is talking to house uh, uh, 24 here uh, or house 24 here is talking to house number two here so the samples of house 24 is going to be forwarded to house number two here then it's going to pass then through a low-pass filter what's the benefit of the low-pass filter the low-pass filter converts the samples into the original analog signal so if you have the samples and you want to reconstruct the original signal again you have to use a low-pass filter so this low-pass filter is used to convert the samples into an analog signal and then uh, house number two here can listen to whatever uh, voice signal uh, that was sent by house number 24 at the other side so basically this is a block diagram of the t1 carrier system the, to summarize the t1 carrier system it multiplexes time division multiplexes uh, so this is as we see this is time Access. So it takes a sample from house number one, sample from house number two, and so on up to house number 24. It time division multiplex, multiplexes 24 houses, 24 voice signals, okay? And then through a rotating switch, it transmits them through the transmission medium, which is the underground cable. At the other side, there is a rotating switch that distributes these samples for the different houses, 24 houses on the other side. And then the other houses, they pass the, uh, the, they pass the samples through low-pass filters to get the analog signals back. So this is a summary of the T1 carrier system. In the next video, we are going to discuss uh, how the uh, frame structure of the T1 carrier system looks like and the details of that frame structure. See you in the next video.